This is my Tesla Model Y Performance, and I've had it for six months. I've had my Model 3 for a few years, but I wanted something with a little bit more room with a car seat and I like to carry a lot of stuff. So I traded in my Model 3 Stealth Performance for a Model Y Performance. So I'm not a car reviewer, I'm just a tech guy. So I'll give you my personal impressions of the car and my thoughts after six months of ownership. I have driven a few EVs and I have videos on most of them on my channel. I've driven the Mach-E, the Model X, the Hummer EV, and the Chevy Bolt. And I have a good understanding of what's out there and how they compare to what I have today. I also talk to a lot of people and I know what the common questions are. So in this video, I'm gonna cut the fluff and talk about the stuff you guys wanna know after six months of owning the car, like range and actual costs and the infotainment system and self-driving. Now, I did have a plug installed in my garage. I went with the NEMA plug. This plug for me was only $30, but the installation to run the wire from my breaker in the basement all the way around my house was around $1,200. Tesla's official charger is $400 plus installation. And it's actually out of stock a lot. So if you're in a rush, you may be paying over asking on eBay. The NEMA plug I have gets me around 30 miles of range per hour of charge. And Tesla's official charger would be 44 miles. And for me, since I'm charging overnight, that difference just didn't justify the cost. Now living in Michigan, I've had a lot of time to drive through the winter months and one of the biggest battery drainers is heating the cabin of the car and keeping the battery warm. Now for me, I get around 280 miles during my normal non-winter driving conditions. And that's mixed driving between freeway and side streets. Now with the cold start, I saw around 170 miles with mixed driving in the winter. Now the cool thing about the Model Y compared to the, my previous three is that it has a heat pump. The heat pump is like a refrigerator compressor. It moves heat from one place to another. So if you precondition the battery, which basically means plugging it in and letting it know what time you're going to leave, or you supercharge it, that extra heat generated is used to heat the cabin of the car. And this works great. I found instead of 175, I was getting around 205 miles of range when I preconditioned the battery correctly. Now take this with a grain of salt, but this is what I recorded during my non-scientific testing over the past few months. I also am more of an aggressive driver, so I'm sure you can get more range out of it if you want, but it is a Model Y performance. Now, it does come with performance tires. So in the winter, these tires are really slick. Now I'm probably gonna swap them out for all season tires and it's not Tesla's fault because I bought the car knowing this, but I do wish there was like a cold weather package option available for the Model Y as there was with the Model X a long time ago. Um, so yeah, just something I, I guess want to mention. Now speaking of the trim, let's talk about the price. The total price for me was 64,440. That's with the upgrades, including the $1,000 tow hitch and the $1,000 white interior upgrade. The price has gone up since my order. That same config right now is $72,000. And it doesn't come with a mobile connector for charging at non-Tesla chargers, which is an additional $200 add-on. Really, Tesla? Now, if the car was 70 grand for me, I'm not sure I would have bought it. I would have probably stuck with my Model 3. The cheapest Model Y with no upgrades is $66,000 also didn't get the $12,000 autopilot. I thought at that price, it just doesn't do enough. There's an option to rent it month to month, so if I need to take advantage of all those features, I guess I could do that. Now, on my three, I did get it, but it was only $3,000 at that time. And for 3K, it's like, mm, okay, but 12K, mm -mm. Now, on the road with stock autopilot, it will stay within the lines on most roads. It doesn't switch lanes, but it will speed up and slow down based on traffic, and also it does follow the speed limits. And for me, that's all I truly need. I found it to be pretty consistent and I felt safe majority of the time. But with that being said, that's not unique because Super Cruise that GM has on their cars, it is really good. When I used that on the Hummer just recently, it worked fantastically well and I felt like no concern at all. It was switching lanes and doing all those things. So one of the advantages that Tesla had as far as that you know, autopilot feature. A lot of other cars are doing it now. So that's not really something Tesla can kind of, you know, put their feather in their cap on. Now they do have the full autonomous driving, but that is in beta. And if you've seen videos, yeah, it's pretty scary. So the value of the Model Y just isn't there compared to when I purchased my car just six months ago. And in this price range, there is some additional competition. And in the coming years, it will be even more. 
Also the wait time. You can be waiting nearly a year to get a Model Y. I was actually told I'll get mine in March of 2022, but I ended up getting mine December of 21 on Christmas Eve. So I guess there's a chance of getting it early. Now, I know outside the price tag, Teslas are not that premium. The Model Y, I think, is a pretty good looking car from the 15 inch floating screen, the clean dash, and the massive glass roof. The seats are vegan leather, and I don't worry about the white seats getting dirty as they clean up with just a baby wipe. And a lot of people like to talk about the white seats and how dirty they get. Trust me, that's a non-issue. Now, I don't have any major issues with the interior, but it's not premium by any means. It's just minimal, which I find actually pleasing. Now, I will admit coming from my old three, the changes they made in the Y may seem like a big deal in the grand scheme of things for me, but it's still a basic interior. And for a car that's expensive, it should look a little bit better, especially when you start looking at other brands and kind of what they do with the interior. So yeah, that's something Tesla could always use help with. Now I do love the automatic lift gate in the back. It makes putting in my golf clubs in the car much easier and grabbing stuff and also lowering the seats can be done with the button. And I just find the flexibility of this car to be really nice. So the infotainment system has seen a dramatic change over the past few years. Firstly, we can now add icons to the bottom of the screen. So for example, I can add Spotify, Bluetooth, and wipers. I do wish Apple Music was an option, but Bluetooth is an option for those people wanting to use third-party apps. Now I felt before a lot of the functions were hidden in too many menus. Now with this addition to the shortcuts, I'm able to bring more options to the forefront and I feel like it's better overall laid out. Now there are a lot of shortcuts you can do on the screen that they don't really tell you about and it's something you just sort of hear or you do it on accident, like sliding your finger down navigation will take you to home or work depending on time of day. And by swiping on the temperature icon at the bottom left, you can adjust the temperature quickly without going through the menus. Just a couple of examples, and I'm sure I'm missing plenty of those too. There's a ton of different settings in the car, like different types of way to adjust the steering and, and as far as the regenerative braking, you can make all those adjustments, which I find really nice that I can make the car be as comfortable as it can for me. The EVs are fun cars to drive, but the Model Y performance is the most fun I've had. Now, when I compare the Y performance to my three performance, the three is faster but the size for me makes up for performance. Now don't get me wrong, you step on the accelerator and you'll stick to the back of the seat and the car's suspension is nimble enough to dart around corners without much effort. You can even get that full speed whenever you want. And it's not delegated to a launch mode like some cars. It's raw power, zero to 60 in like 3.2 seconds, which is to me mind numbing fast and it never gets old. Now I do find the ride to be comfortable even during long road trips. It's a little bit bigger than the three and the Y for me is just a really nice size and I don't have any type of driver's fatigue and especially with the autopilot, it makes long road trips really nice to do. Now my Model 3 has had zero issues but sadly my Model Y has had service called three times on it within the first two months of ownership. I will get error messages that the sensors are blocked or blinded all the time. And even when nothing was covering it. So Tesla saw the error codes and replaced the sensors. However, the error came back. I was told it was due to design issues and there's nothing they can do. Then I guess a month later, an update went out and the error message is gone for the most part. But is the issue fixed? I don't know. Now the second issue was the fender was actually coming off. And I was able to push it back in and I heard it click, but I wanted to bring it back to confirm that there was no broken clips or any integrity issues going on. And they confirmed that it was just pushing it back in is fine. And they recommend that I should do it again if it happens again, which I think is weird that my fender just comes off. So yeah, that's kind of expected. <laughs> Also in classic Tesla fashion, fitment and alignment isn't great. There are misaligned parts on this car and you know, I don't really look for them, but they're definitely there. And you know, it's a minor thing, but for a $70,000 vehicle, I would have hoped it will be better. I mean, even if you're going up in the Model X and the Plaid, I mean, you're paying well over a hundred thousand dollars and it still has that same issue. So it's just one of the things you deal with when you have a Tesla, but that doesn't make it right. As you guys are hearing from this video, I'm not a Tesla fanboy, but for me during the time, this was the best car. Now I love the Model Y, it checks all the boxes, but in around four years, when I start looking for a new car, I'd say Tesla will need to provide something more for me to get me as a customer again. With so many other companies, you know, they're making compelling EVs, 
I need to see what Tesla brings that's going to be different. But at the same time, a lot of these car manufacturers are allowing the dealership to mark up the cars. So, you know, you can go in saying, I wanna pay 50 grand for this car, but there could be a dealership markup of $10,000, which we're currently seeing now, which kind of ruins the whole thing for me. So, you know, in four years, depends on what the landscape looks like, where I'm gonna go. But anyways, guys, those are my thoughts after six months of having a Tesla Model Y performance. If you have any questions, please let me know down below. It's Kevin the Tech Ninja. Have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you folks later. Peace.